Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Julie Mann. I am a professional network marketer. I'm an actor and I'm an EFT practitioner and I'm really delighted because today I'm joined by sex and relationship expert Kristen D'Amato. Hi Kristen. Hi Julie. Really great to have you here. Yeah, I'm very excited about our conversation. Fabulous. So I think the best place for us to start really is your journey, you know, as it is that you work with people around relationships. Mm -hmm. How was it for you growing up as a girl? Yes, well, that is the, that is the big part of why I do this, this particular part of what I do. It's very multifaceted, but having sex and intimacy and relationship be the doorway for me to work with women has everything to do with how I grew up. And so my, my parents' relationship was very challenging, um, and they ended up separating when I was quite young. But from both perspectives, now that I'm adult, I understand this so much more clearly, the way that my mom navigated my, my dad's behavior had a significant impression on me. And then also my dad, he very much thought of women more as like playthings and like really um, sexualized everything in a very distorted way. And it was oftentimes very uncomfortable as a little girl and embarrassing sometimes to be in his presence because there were no boundaries. There, it was just like everything felt Cons like consistently highly inappropriate and it was such an uncomfortable thing to be in the checkout line for example at a, at a grocery store and have him be heavily heavily flirting with the 16 year old cashier or you know it's like things like this being taken to strip clubs when I was a little girl with him and being in this situation where basically I felt really empowered in so many parts of my life, really confident, outgoing, empowered. But when it came to this moment of, of like how to relate to men in particular um, and having this messaging from my father, it was really confusing. And as I came into puberty and my dad dropped out of the scene of my life right before then around 11 years old, and I haven't seen him since then, um, it was a very confusing time for me. So I had my dad gone and missing and what I knew my dad liked and wanted and expected from a woman, a female, and to have his love and attention was to basically just be um, a servant in a way to whatever it was that the man wanted or desired. So I got involved very at a very young age in sexual relationships and it was very... Um, very disempowering experience for me. I didn't understand. I didn't understand how to set clear boundaries. I certainly didn't understand how to have my own voice in the experience. I had the assumption and like expectation that I was supposed to just basically step aside and let, let this be whatever it wanted to be for the other person. And so I learned how to really disassociate and numb out at a young age from those experiences. And fortunately, I, I didn't go down the track of having lots and lots of different partners um, and becoming really promiscuous. I, but the relationships I did have were not ones that felt right like I even really wanted to be there a lot of the time and I didn't quite know how to navigate that and get get out of the situation I just sort of went along I went along with a lot of situations and that set the stage for many years in my life um, around intimacy and so it was interesting to have this tension side by side where all these other areas in my life I did feel a lot of confidence and was like really viewed by my peers as someone who was very empowered and outspoken and stood up for myself and was strong and confident but inside of myself I could feel this other part of me and it didn't they didn't match up and so that's one piece specifically the piece around sex and sexuality that um, helped weave into my healing transformational journey and really trying to understand like how to bring this into alignment 
with what I knew on a cellular, cellular level, I felt could be the most incredible connective experience to God source energy, that being like sexual energy and sex. I could feel that on a cellular level from a young age, but I had no idea how to access it because of the life experiences I had. So it's been really a journey over these past decades of closing that gap and gaining a better understanding for myself. And through that journey, of course, I have become an expert in it in terms of being able to help others navigate through their own ways that they might numb out, disconnect, um, not feel as empowered as they want to, not even know what it is that they desire because their, their voice has been for various reasons. Um, they've been disconnected from it for so long. Wow. And did you experience a lot of people outside of the home that were also in unhealthy relationships? Outside of the home? Um, yeah. I mean, we, we live in a world and, and, you know, certainly in my culture in the States, it's very much promoted that the woman is in a disempowered place and not encouraged to, and this is outside of the bedroom, just in general, we're we're not necessarily encouraged or nor is it valued oftentimes to really express what it is that we want. So like deep down, what do we want? Not to take care of somebody else, not to be this, um, I don't wanna say nurture because I actually really value that word a lot as like such an incredible gift that, that women offer, but to basically just put aside what our needs and desires are to serve others. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's modeled in our culture all around us. And I would imagine it's the same for, for you and your culture, the, you know, the bits that I know about it. Um, but I'll certainly speak from here in the States and everything that's marketed and movies and all of it. It's, it's very much like, how do we show up for our children, for the men, you know, for, and when you bring that into sex and sexuality, it's amplified even more so, so much of this performance aspect and definitely not a sincere expression of what it is that we want. And I think oftentimes there's a real fear of a woman who's really fully empowered, period, and sexually empowered even more so. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I know that you say that you're obsessed with embodiment. I'd really love you to talk more about that. What do you actually mean by that? Yeah, so for me, the, the when, when I'm working with somebody and also the different tools and skills and practices I've been attracted to throughout my life, they have everything to do with getting out of here and getting into your heart, but also into your body. Like I, I believe and just know that our body has its own special language and that it never lies to us. And that if we can learn how to discern and, and understand the language of our body and learn how to develop fine listening skills to our body and the sensations that are happening there and why they're happening, the patterns they're connected to, that that's where we can make real lasting change. So that's my, that's my love and passion. And it's also my approach in the work. There's conversation for sure. We have the conversation grounds the experience and helps integrate the experience. But a lot of it has to do with really going inside of our body and listening to what it is that's going on there when we when we think of a situation that we either already experienced or that we imagine ourselves experiencing. And to be able to then use the information that we get from the sensations in our body to help guide us into a more conscious choice. I guess we have to stop, don't we, to actually do that, to actually listen. Yeah, and listening. You know, it's like this listening is key to me. And so many of us have no idea how to listen even in a conversation with others well. That's an incredible, beautiful skill. And then it had on top of that even more nuance, more subtlety, more mastery of listening, where it's this fine-tuned listening to what's going on inside and really understanding the messages there. Yeah, active listening in a, in a very different mm. way. Yeah. So um, how important would you say sex is in a relationship? Oh, that's a great question. Um, well, I think that... I think it's incredibly important. I don't, I don't know that, I don't wanna make a sweeping statement to say that it's important for everyone across the board, but I do think that intimacy is important. 
So, you know, intimacy often is, is automatically correlated for many people at translates as sex, but to me, you know, there's, it's something so much more than that. And so being able, whatever it is that you want and need and, and desire, whether it's a, a, a caress on the cheek or holding hands or snuggling or some sort of physical expression, everyone's needs and what they want to thrive are so different. So making a sleeping statement doesn't feel like it would actually be accurate. Um, but being able to stay connected to for each individual to be connected to what feels good for them and helps them feel really nourished and nurtured, both with them taking care of themselves and touching themselves and nurturing themselves to also doing that if you're in a relationship with, with a partner and keeping that flow can open and communicative and receptive feels crucial. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to make a, a sweeping generalization either, but my experience in the UK is that people don't really talk about sex, certainly don't talk about physical intimacy. And, um, you know, I have no idea what it's like in your culture, but generally I think that people talking about what they really want in terms of their, their sexual experience is, is, a, is a challenging thing. Yes. Yeah. I think that in general, I would say that that's true here as well. And oftentimes when it is spoken about, it's not from their actually what they want, but what from what they feel like they're supposed to say from messaging from movies and, and film, you know, different, different other sources outside of themselves. So I think it's such an important conversation to have, you know, it's like setting up healthier relationships with feeling comfortable and confident. And this is a big part of what excites me is that I work with people in and out of relationship. It's not about that for me. It's really about developing this deeper intimacy with yourself and yourself first, like really learning how to, like I said, understand those voices, but specifically to understand like what it is that you want in your life because they're all connected. What you want in the bedroom is connected to what you want to show up in service in the world or in relationship to your children. You know, it's like, it's all connected. And it has to do with like, how, how willing are you to listen to what it is that you want and like soften into letting yourself be, letting yourself hear yourself. And meeting where you feel resistant or afraid to do that with a lot of tenderness and a lot of forgiveness and a lot of love instead of just like, oh, I can't look at that part of myself. Like if you desired something sexually that is taboo, for example, you know, a lot of times people would just be like, I can't even like deal with that part of myself. I'm going to just push it in the back corner, pretend it doesn't exist, never speak about it, never even let myself acknowledge that that's something that is curious or exciting to me. And I'm just going to stuff it back there and pretend it doesn't exist. And we do that with so many parts of ourselves that we feel shame or guilt around. And it's like, it, it, when you're thinking of a river flowing, that this energy is a river flowing it through us constantly. It's like, these are dropping these huge boulders down sometimes that block that flow. And so it's having a willingness to, to look inside of ourselves and start to want to know the parts of ourselves that we were always afraid to know. And that's the journey that we go on. And through that, we start to be able to really feel what it is we really desire. And then from there, you can build on um, looking at confidence, you know, building confidence to ask for that or to take actions to implement it into your life. So I guess really it takes courage to even begin that journey and um, mm. of course not trying to compare yourself to anyone or anything um, and that ideal kind of perfect um, relationship that of course is, is, you know, we see so many times in films like you were saying earlier on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So on, on your website, you asked the question, do you want to experience mind blowing sexual pleasure and ecstasy? created from a sense of safety cultivated from within. I mean, I imagine most people on the planet would absolutely love that. But I also imagine that for a lot of people, that's a bit of a scary prospect. 
and maybe they have yeah. thoughts about, oh, but I'll be out of control, you know, and, you know, so what, what have you got to say about that? Mm, it's nice that you bring up control because that's, that's such a huge thing, right, for all of us that to stay safe, we think that to stay safe, we need to stay in control. And so this is a real place that we explore. Why? Why do we have that impression inside of ourselves that we need to stay in control to be safe? Why do we have the idea that to be vulnerable is, is unsafe, is weak? You know, when you can look at that from a different perspective and, and say, wow, actually to be vulnerable is the strongest, most beautiful, empowering place that we can reside. And there's a translation, there's a flip there that needs to happen to do that in a way that actually does feel safe. And that has everything to do with how we, un how we understand, have tools to be able to really take care of ourselves not look for someone else to keep us safe, not look again to external circumstances to keep us safe, how much money we have, what house we have, what partner we have, how they show up for us or don't show up for us. All the expectations and assumptions that we make that are put on our external circumstances. When the beautiful thing is that we don't need any of that, we get to do it all within ourselves. And it is scary because, wow, that means then like, I, then I'm responsible for my life results. Ooh, that's, that's a very exciting and terrifying prospect to many, you know, yeah. because you can't blame other people for what's happening for you. You can't blame other people for if you're in a relationship that doesn't feel exciting to you or you know, whatever, you're, you're making a certain amount of money or you're at a job that you're unhappy with. It's like there's, there's a flip that, that needs to happen inside to be able to open to receiving that kind of joy and pleasure and ecstasy. And what I know about taking responsibility for my life mm -hmm. is that it's incredibly, yes, a bit scary, but also incredibly empowering. And, and really, I'm the only one that can do anything about what's going on with me. Yeah, it's total freedom. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of issues typically do your clients come to you with and, and how do you work with them? Mm -hmm. So let's see. That's a wide question. I'll see if I can kind of narrow it down to some to a, some nut, a nutshell here. I would say that one, one scenario is women that have been in a long-term relationship and they're, they're, not feeling, they're not feeling met. Um, by their partner in various ways. It can be sexually, but also just like with that intimate connection. Um, in some cases, maybe never have really felt that way, but some cases they have and they've lost it. So wanting to reconnect. I am a mother to two young children as well, a two-year-old and 11-year-old. So I bring in a lot of wisdom and experience for how that really shifts a relationship and how, or can shift a relationship and how to help navigate the different challenges that, that come to an individual as well as to a relationship. Um, communication, we're working a lot on, on communication. Again, like that dialogue within ourselves, but then also bringing that out into the relationship so that more vulnerability and intimacy and self-trust and then trust in the other can be built. Um, so transitions, when, when people are leaving a long-term relationship or divorcing, that's another time where I support people a lot. Um, let's see. When there is that gap of knowing, actually having some clear desires inside of themselves and having a fear and or a I'm not sure how, like I have this desire, but I just have no idea how to bring that into form in my life. So looking for some support, knowing that they're, they desire a change and a, a, a big growth in their life, a big upgrade in their life and having maybe some ideas about what that looks like, um, but having no idea how to get to the, to the destination point. That would be another common scenario. 
those are some of the ones off the top of my top of my head. Oftentimes I'm working with people who do have some desire and motivation already in their lives for transformation and they orient that way already. And so I happen to also often work with women that are entrepreneurs. I, that wasn't something I like officially declared, but it happens to be like who most of my clients are. So that's um, not a scenario, but it happens to be a, a, a layer of, so they're navigating very specific topics, you know, where you're running your own business, you're a parent, you're in a relationship, like all these different things that are such immense complex reflectors of what's going on in your life and they're doing it all at the same time so there's really it's very a very rich territory for being able to look at ourselves and um, keep tweaking and making change and they're also when you're an entrepreneur there's a willing you understand risk taking and um, really going for it when you believe in something so there's a certain mentality I think that really matches the depth of transformation that I offer. If there are any women watching, Kristen, that they want to stay in the relationship they're in, but they know that it's not quite the way they want it, is there, are there any kind of tips or advice that you can give them right now that, that could start to make a difference? Mm, that's a great question. Well, just in general, I, I always feel like and especially with children involved, but when you're in, already in a long-term relationship or maybe even not long-term, but that you're, for me, I, I really wanted to make, I like to make sure that I've kind of tried everything out first before I actually would leave the relationship. So I actually tend to advocate more for if you, if there's part of you that wants to stay and it's from a place that feels true for you, but there's a lot that kind of feels like a mess and out of alignment, that's a good thing. That's like a really rich playground for looking at where you might be projecting and you know what's going on inside of you that it's an opportunity for you to really step up and grow always. I, I see that as. So that's sort of the place I would automatically go if someone came to me in that situation is just, okay, what is it that you want or at least think you want? And, and then a little bit about what's going on, but we won't even get into that too much. And then really looking at why is it that you're not having that and starting to really the personal responsibility piece. It's like, it's not about the other person. We're having a conversation about you and how you're showing up for yourself in this relationship. And so that inevitably leads to amazing discoveries and a lot to work on and be able to put into practice. So that's sort of a general answer to your question specifically, what would, what are some tips for right now? I think one of the tips is I would say that to start to really pay attention to how much you're blaming the other person for what's going on. And just like have this, have this voice in your head where it's like a light switch where you turn it on where you're like, okay, I'm just going to, there's going to be a part of me that's going to observe my thoughts when I, throughout my day in relationship to this person and also when we have interactions and to just realize how frequently you're blaming them for things and putting it on them. Um, take a pulse on how willing are you to authentically apologize. Um, I would say to give yourself some time each day to really connect with your breath and close your eyes and, and put your hands on your belly and breathe into your belly and feel what is happening there without trying to change it. Just notice what's happening there. Is it easy? Is there tension? Do the same thing up near your heart, the same thing up here and just take some nice steady breaths throughout this, these three parts of your body with on the inhale, your, your belly coming out. So um, it doesn't matter if you breathe through your mouth or your nose, but like not trying to change and really starting to develop a listening, a deeper listening to yourself and allowing the breath to, inviting the breath to soften any places where you have tension. And it's amazing how nourishing this can be and how it can start to let emotion 
flow where you've maybe been holding. And so it just starts, you're starting to build more trust with yourself. I apologize right. about that. You're starting to build more trust with yourself so that you are inviting yourself to open and feel, feel what it is you want. And sometimes that's all that you need. Sometimes that permission and perhaps letting some of the emotion flow, five minutes of that, 10 minutes of that, and all of a sudden you're, you're clear what the next step is or you're, you're able to go and apologize for a you know, conversation you have with your partner and that was projecting a whole bunch onto them or something like that. So that's definitely a really simple step to be able to start to cultivate listening more deeply to what it is that you want and giving yourself permission to feel and, and therefore feel safe and open. Brilliant. Love that. So I know that you're a yoga teacher too. You're also uh, an artist, a musician, and you've also written a cookbook, haven't you? A plant-based cookbook. So how did that come about? So the cookbook, um, Oh gosh, when I was in high school, I actually had, I, I told a fib about my age and I went and got a job when I was, I was very young. I was 12 actually. And I had said that I was older than that. And I went and got a job at a banquet hall where they do weddings and events in the kitchen. And so I started there on the weekends and I was doing like washing the salad and very like the bottom of the totem pole position. And I stayed there all the way through high school and I ended up being one of their main chefs by the end of that whole experience. And I basically ended up getting like a culinary education side by side with my high school education. So I had this skill set, this amazing skill set to be able to really go out into the world from when I finished school and, and make, make money with food. And it was something that I really enjoyed doing. And I, I left as soon as I finished high school, I left my family's home and went off on my own. And at that time I had just, I decided to become vegetarian. I grew up in a very traditional kind of meat and potatoes family. And, um, there was just something inside of me that it just didn't feel, I didn't, I wasn't one of those kids that like, oh, this is disgusting. I don't want to eat meat. Like you're making me do this. It wasn't like that. I, I was, it was fine. Um, but there was just something that, that told me like, yeah, I don't, I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't need this. It wasn't like this big thing, you know, it wasn't a big statement one way or the other. And I had often, I already had like a real, I did not grow up in a religious family at all, but when I was in around 14, around 13, 14 years old, I started to have a, a real, um, I guess, spiritual awakening of sorts, looking back on it, where I started to feel really guided um, towards certain things that were helping to make the world a better place and me showing up to do what I could. And so I started, you know, this is a long time ago. I'm 45 now. So I was like trying to get shopping bags for my parents to not use shopping bags and recycling and buying. I used to buy all my own because I was working. I was buying all my own like organic shampoos and stuff. And I had to take a bus like to towns away from me to get this because there, you couldn't get these kind of things. People weren't really doing this at that time. Um, I had to special order these net shopping grocery bags from this like really obscure um, place, mail order, because we didn't have the internet back then, you know, <laughs> it was just like, so, and it was this motivation from inside of me. So the same thing with becoming vegetarian and I never turned back. I've been vegetarian ever since. And I became vegan more recently in the past five years. Um, but yeah, it was it was this, this burning or not even burning. It was a desire that was motivated from inside of me. And so my cooking kind of started to go in that direction as well, where even though I was cooking meat for other people in different restaurants, I started to really orient to food as medicine and started to learn about it alongside of the other passions I had, like starting to practice yoga around the same time when I was 17, 
And again, yoga was like not a thing back then yet. It was really peripheral, just starting to have access to it here. And um, different types of body work and different practices where I just felt really, really excited to explore Chinese medicine and acupuncture and just all these things that I delve heavily into in my late teens and early 20s and, and food as medicine. And so ultimately, fast forward, one of the last experiences I had working with food, it was after coming out of being a head chef at a retreat center, I had started a business called um, Fruit of Life. And it was cooking organic meals, all organic, all plant-based meals for families. It was when my son was born and I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom with him. And so I was preparing food a couple of times a week for 12 families and trying to make it be really affordable and really delicious, really simple, um, but also really flavorful and international cuisines and bringing in all this experience that I had with food and making it really affordable for them and showing that like plant-based organic food can be not expensive, can be really tasty and exciting to your palate and also fill you up and feel nourishing to kind of break all these stereotypes that, that non-vegetarians and vegans had about that type of food. And then with the cookbook, I also really wanted to design it so that people could make really fast meals. And if you had zero experience in the kitchen and thought you were an awful cook, that you were able to also do these recipes. So to make them really accessible, both to people who are beginners, as well as really seasoned plant-based chefs. So that was, that was the idea was like, bringing in that simplicity and really tasty recipes. I, I lay it out seasonally and the whole foundation of it, the whole umbrella that it is in is food as medicine. So there's like a real healing component to all the food. And I'm talking about each recipe about how it has a healing aspect for you. Wonderful. And is that recipe book still available? Can people get hold of it if they want to? It is. It's on Amazon. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll, um, I'll just put a link. Great. Mm -hmm. And actually, how can people get hold of you to talk to you about any of the things that you've been talking about today? Yeah, my my website, the way she walks org has a blog on there that I write actively in and it's all on sexuality, desire and motherhood. It's for women. And I, I love it. I feel really excited about the blog and writing. Um, we haven't talked really about writing at all, but that's another huge part of my work. I write a lot in general blogs and I also am finishing up another book and it, it's just writing is a huge passion of mine and a big, a big part of my offering and service in the world. So, um, so my website is the blog is really the feature of that, but there's also an about me on there and all the contact information on there as well. And my email is Kristen at Kristen D'Amato. So that's also a great way to reach out to me. And we'll, we'll put links in the bottom of this so that it's easy, easy access. Brilliant. And it is an absolutely inspirational blog. I absolutely love it. So is there anything else, Kristen, that you'd really like to say before we close? Hmm. No, I don't think so. We, we've covered some really fun territory and you know, I could talk all day, but I don't need to do that right now. I, I think that I feel really grateful for this opportunity to, to connect with you, Julie. Thank you for inviting me. And yeah, I really appreciate you and your presence and, and what you're offering in the world. So thanks for me. And then also for doing these interviews to help support people that you feel excited about what they're doing in the world to connect with others it's, it's all about us connecting and supporting each other so I'm really appreciative thank you thank you so much for sharing your wisdom I can't wait to uh, watch this back so I can really kind of get to grips with some of the things that you said so thank you very very much